I think um, people should understand that it's it's not because the, the environment turns you like this. It's already who you are. I was born like this. Philippine society is mostly accepting of transgenders because in pre-colonial times, the Filipino version of a shaman, called a babylon, was a village priestess or medium in indigenous communities and was sometimes transgender. However, discrimination still exists, and although transgender people are culturally celebrated, they are not politically recognized. Um, when I first came out in public, that was here 2011, um, at first, it was really scary because um, we don't know how the people will uh, acknowledge and you know accept us. Because um, back then, year 2011, people don't know about transgender. I have been the top of my class since I was in grade school. I I was proud. It all changed when my father noticed something is for him different and not right with me but for me it's right and then as i grew up as i transition and find out that what i see down there is not who i am but i'm who i what i feel is i'm a real woman here in the Philippines, transgender is actually accepted, unlike other countries. There's always a discrimination, but um, we're trying to do our best to, to understand them. They just know me, they just know my, my name, but not my personality. Normally, an everyday living on a cruise line or a cruise ship, most of them don't know my gender at all. But of course, people talk. Whenever people talk, whenever they discover of my gender is, some of them doesn't feel good about my presence. Some of them like me already. So what I feel about it is I stay away from them. For me, I wanted them to know who I am and how they would feel. I've known since I was five, that I am different, that I am not the typical boy. I was raised a little privileged and strict family. Everyone is an achiever. I took my pre-law degree for four years, then another four years for the law degree that is um, the degree of Juris Doctor. And then I started working with the government for two years. I intend to take the bar in November. I decided to take the male hormones because my girlfriend for 10 years broke up with me. When she broke up with me, I lost a part of myself that time so, so I found myself alone. My name is Avery Smith. Right now I'm a 17 years old and I'm a grade 11 student. I have many friends that join pageant because I'm um, to raise the flag of the LGBT and trans community. My family is so proud of me because I'm doing great and all things I do is all about for my better future as a transgender woman. Full support all my family members, my brothers, sisters, and my father and my mother. My dream is to finish my study and every day is joining pageant for my better future as a young trans woman. I am the only child of my Mother and father is Regina Rosario and Esther Rosario. And my mother is my best friend. She is very loving and supporting mother. When I was a teenager, 
I do identity crisis because I don't know what is my gender preference. Is. My father failed me that I am a gay. It's very, very crucial part of my life because my father did not accept me at all because I'm only child, I'm a son, and it's very hard for me to hide who I am. So it's very hard, hardest part of my life. The LGBTQIA plus community are still at risk because of the absence of a national law to protect them from discrimination and hate crimes. The first bill seeking to end gender-based discrimination was filed in Congress in 2000. More than 20 years later, that anti-discrimination bill, also called SOGI Equality Bill, has yet to overcome opposition from various groups and become law. The fight for equal rights and political recognition is a shared critical component within the transgender community. Hi, my name is Dindi Tan. I'm wearing two hats now. Again, as I said earlier, one as a government official and two as um, a reformist in the advocacy uh, field for LGBT empowerment uh, and welfare. The decision of the president to appoint the very first transgender third level appointee in the government was a welcome gesture because for the longest time we have wanted to break glass ceiling for people to be able to serve in national post and the presidential decision um, to in effect uh, appoint me to a government uh, national government organization was really um, a long delayed uh, a long delayed uh, welcome initiative um, from the national government. That's why whatever happened in the past, um, when, when I was abandoned when I was 14, I never stopped. I didn't stop. Like I didn't get the family support that most kids got um, when they were young. I never got the guidance as a young child, mostly because of religion. We have been uh, pretty much uh, uh, ruled by many foreign powers. Spain, for the more than 300 years. That's why the culture of religion, at least Catholicism, is very persistent until this time. The Japanese occupational forces, American um, forces, so we have had our share of the cultural idiosyncrasies of these colonizers that still are pretty much pervasive to this day. Case in point, for the Spaniards, because they introduced Catholicism in the country, there is a great divide in the society when it comes to advocating for and advancing LGBT rights in the country. Because to this day, the Roman Catholic Church has not been very uh, open to really seeing things move forward when it comes to LGBT um, rights in the country. They see this as um, anathema to their dogma. In the Philippines, at least, transgender people are culturally celebrated, but they are not politically recognized. My, my family is a religious family, Roman Catholic. And at first, when I notified them with regard to my decision of taking the male hormones, they immediately were shocked. However, um, I, I offered my mom to um, go with me in the consultation with the endo endocrinologist, so um, I have nothing much in the future right now. But only at the present, 
just love yourself first. I'm a part of trans couple and I'm a married into a trans man. And together for 15 years, we've been married for five years now, so I witness all the changes. And I can say that I also transition too. I learn how to adapt the changes and I accept him as a whole because I love him. When he confessed that he is a transgender man, um, I'm in doubt actually in continuing relationship with him. I don't have any experience and me personally, I don't want to be in that kind of relationship because I grew up in a very traditional and religious family. And uh, sorry to say this, but they say uh, in my family, that's immoral. You know, I didn't really understand myself. You know, it's, it was really, it was a struggle between myself. I was really, you know, trying to, there was a part of me that I, want, I wanted to end everything. You will come to the point in your life that you will be overwhelmed with everything that's happening. In you. But life doesn't end. You still need to continue you, you, what you have, what God's given you. I really started to be comfortable with myself when I started uh, hormone therapy. I think HRT is very important for transgender gender people. I've been transitioning for 10 years and uh, the medical availability, the resources here isn't that you know, advanced. And we actually try to tell it to my family. And sad to say, uh, because of those traditional beliefs, they didn't accept it. He transitioned, he started HRT, and then we came back to my family and introduced him again. And he didn't know this, they didn't know this at all. As in, it's like a different person. We are 15 years and I think we, we will be forever. I, I'm not really comfortable with my old body. My body before, it just doesn't fit me, you know? just doesn't fit the way how I think, uh, the way I will, you know, I will be comfortable with myself. The hardest part with uh, the HRT is the emotional and the mental part because uh, not everyone will understand what you're going through. And I didn't want to be like this, but I have to accept myself because, you know, the more I understand myself, the more I think I can help others. Okay, the reason we have a community church in uh, Marikina City is to provide that venue or a safe space for many LGBTs who doesn't have a place to go to or they have been discriminated against or they have been uh, considered as an outcast. So it's really essential for them to look for a safe haven wherein they can be who they are uh, safely and be able to be true to themselves while worshiping or um, expressing their faith. Within communities, uh, there's a lot of issues. There are the trans, it's the gender identity uh, bill, while for the mi many middle class, it's the recognition of uh, marriage equality, while for others, it's about hate crimes or discrimination in the job place. I remember there was one uh, who works at a bank uh, she was told uh, even if she worked there, she's already a regular employee. She's been there for several years. The vice president had to tell her to wear men's clothes where, when she's already a trans woman. And if not, she'll be terminated. So what I gave her as a counsel, it might be that the higher management doesn't know that. So. That's what she did and found out there's no such policy. <laughs> so there, she's still there working at the bank. But there are also those who experienced uh, bullying, uh, hate crimes, um, cyberbullying most especially, or being kicked out of their own uh, spaces or rental houses. Uh, they get threats. Um, even if they own the house, they pay the bills on time completely. They still get treated uh, um, in such a way that people uh, would tell them, you're, you're gay, you're uh, malas. So they discriminate me because of my gender, but I don't take it personally because I, I have a fa family. I have a lot of friends who support me to, and relatives to 
to support me and accept me for who I am. Uh, unforgettable ex experience with my father when he talked to me in the table and he said that he accept me who I am. I feel so very cloud nine that the time because all of my struggles and challenges when he didn't accept me it's fade away we rejoice during the time that i was appointed i think uh, there was uh, much of a um, optimism optimism and forward uh, looking for people in my community thinking that somebody made it somebody from the community was able to make it and if that were the case then other people can other people from the same community can pretty much you know um, tread the same path I'm Bems Benedito I'm a proud transgender woman and I used to be part of Ang Ladlad political party according to CNN it's the only LGBT political party in the world and I used to be their chairperson and their first nominee when we ran in Congress in 2010 and in 2013 elections. So technically, I'm also the first transgender candidate for parliament in Asia. In 2010 and 2013, we were able to muster like 120,000 to 150,000 votes. At that time, you only need 200,000 votes to be able to get a seat in Congress. So that close, that fight was very close. Of course, the what's the very specific transgender health interventions, which are um, hormonal um, therapy. For hormonal therapy, we have only a few practitioners who provide you know, advice and guidance with the use of hormones, particularly limited in the cities in Metro Manila. The psychiatric uh, management of transgender women and transgender men. We also have a limited number of psychiatrists in the Philippines who practice that. And uh, of course, the concern about surgical intervention, the genital gender affirming surgery, we only have a few who actually practice doing it uh, locally. And of course, that's, those are also affected by the supply of uh, medicines. When you go through the Food and Drug Administration website, only a few uh, hormones for gender affirming uh, therapy are um, approved no, by the Philippine FDA. I have a mother. She's a single mother. I'm the only child. My mother see me as a lesbian, something like butch. And as I remember, that was, uh, I'm five years old. And um, I just felt before that um, I am a uh, little boy, but not yet really, my body is different from the, from the voice. I started to, to, to accept it, you know, that I'm, I'm not going to be a boy because um, the, pu the puberty is starting to hit. So um, it's really hard at first. I think that's one of the saddest days of my life. I grew up in a broken family. My mother and father got separated when I was 10 years old. So when I was growing with my cousins, with family and everything, I would show them how I dance. But that's, I think, how they knew that I was already growing so unusual with the others. You know, I'm not, I'm not a male. <laughs> so my mom did not accept it right away, especially my dad also. She gradually um, accepted for who I am. I was a fighter, so I wanted to do what I feel, what is best for me. Um, I actually taking care of my niece because my sister and her husband is uh, still studying. So I decided to take care of her, send her to school. During the pandemic, um, it's, uh, it's her first time to go to school, but it's only online. So I'm the one who helped her um, attending online class. I go to work during the night. I go home at around 7, and then we will prepare. Since I'm single, so I decided to uh, pay her tuition, buy all the stuff. And ever since she was a baby, I'm the one who was buying milk. First time she saw me, she smiled and hugged me. 
I became a mom instantly. And of course, when we, we talk about the medical practice, particularly uh, focusing on transgender health, the professional uh, societies of doctors, uh, particularly those uh, who are supposed to be providing hormone uh, therapy gui guidance, the what we call the endocrinologists, as well as the psychiatrists and psychologists, in their particular uh, society, they have no guidelines no, for this treatment. So we are working on educating our fellow obstetricians and gynecologists about you know, including you know, this uh, clients in our clinics, not just the pregnant and not just the gynecologic uh, concerns, but even um, transgender uh, health concerns. So when you talk about hormone replacement therapy or trans men, we either give once a month or the once a week doses. And compared to trans women, the hormones take a long period of time before we see physical changes. And during those times, um, I almost stopped high school, going to school. I stopped for a month and then my teachers visited me. What's happening? They asked me. Family drama, I've experienced it all. Humiliation, publicly by my father, I, I had that because I am me. But it never stopped me. I was supposed to be in a law school. I passed the exams and it was all taken away because I am like this. Well, it's not directly illegal to marry, but it's not recognized. There are holy unions that are being administered in the country now by the metropolitan community churches, but it's not accepted or it's not recognized by the state. So it's useless. So it's not beneficial for transgender women because it doesn't recognize any transgender relationships who wants to go into long lasting and recognized relationships especially if their partners are you know foreigners that they want to go abroad and they want the state to, to recognize it just like any heterosexual couples any privileges that comes with it for any couples should be accorded to lgbt's or transgender people just the right to adoption you know the right to medical uh, attention if your partner gets sick you know, you don't need to call the next of kin or the nearest relative just for you to have that. We have a lot of work to do, you know, to educate even the professionals. There are even a lot of doctors who are not aware of the existence of transgender individuals in the Philippines. The World Health Organization is working on the transgender health package for the Philippines. The transgender health package has to go through eventually the different medical society in order for that to to be recognized no, by the Philippine healthcare system. All the recommendations no, in the transgender health package will eventually be provided by the government. It's not af affordable in the general population. Um, no insurance covers for it because it's not yet included in the clinical practice guidelines made by the medical society. And of course, uh, it, it takes a lot of discussions before uh, we come up with these recommendations. For example, I grew up not knowing that who I am or what I am, right? And then as I grew up, as I transition and find out that what I see down there is not who I am, but I'm who I, what I feel is I'm a real woman. A real woman that is, should be also look at as a woman and love as as a woman also and there for me there's no such thing as real because sometimes it hurts also oh you're not a real woman so it hurts so stating that it hurts already that's why i think um i'm saying this is because it's also hurting inside if if a trans like me got introduced to a cis man who falls in love with me also, it's so hard to reveal who I am immediately. Whenever we have fiestas, fiestas is a communal celebration of uh, 
thanksgiving to the gods for their bounty. And whenever these are held in the provinces, we dedicate days or nights to giving LGBT people the stage for entertainment. So I'm now saying this is about the culture. You are given some sort of a cultural relevance because you are given space to entertain, to show your talent as LGBT people. But what happens after that? What's more substantive next to that? Are we ending our participation only in that respect? Or there is something you know, more meaningful than entertaining people? That is the better question. That is where we put the, uh, the, the, that sign. Uh, what comes next? How about institutionalizing mechanisms that would afford and guarantee uh, the welfare and the rights of LGBT people? How far are we doing in terms of enacting social legislation pertaining to empowering the LGBT people in the country? How far have we gone in terms of mainstreaming LGBT people as political candidate themselves in electoral in the electoral process? How many have we seen from this from that sector to have fielded LGBT candidates such that we have representation in the legislature, for example, or in the executive branch of the government? Not much. Not much. Many people, even if they're not Roman Catholic, they still uh, stop the passage of the anti-discrimination bill, which has been filed for decades, since like 22 years ago. Uh, most of the time, it's the conservatives as a whole, and not just the Roman Catholics, even in, in other religions. They feel that if uh, that get passed, same-sex marriage will follow. What I would tell to trans people right now, don't forget about God because um, religion might forget you, might hate you, might persecute you, but the God, the real God, the living God wouldn't do that. The real God loves you unconditionally and He can accept you for who you are or whoever you choose to be uh, for, the, for the rest of your lives. And don't mind the, all the bashing, just focus, to excel, love yourself, uh, do something, create something for yourself. And in that way, you learn to love yourself and people will feel that. And people will start to love you for who you are. And people, the mentality, the consciousness of the society will change. That is why in the question of what's your reaction about independent surveys stating, among others, that the Philippines is a relatively um, accepting country compared to the other countries in the region. Uh, I would not like to be, I don't want to be optimistic about it and to give an answer that's, uh, you know, that would uh, give false hope. We need to have a, uh, an honest-to-goodness survey of the temperature check on the ground. And if, we're to, if we are to uh, do that, it would lead us to the answer that not much, not much has changed. People just ignore you because they don't want to be hostile. But that, 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 that does not necessarily translate that they are accepting of you. They just tolerate you. In, 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 in my, the household of my members, when I ask them, are you being... Uh, taken care of by your family, they just ignore me. They know that I'm gay, they know that I'm trans, but uh, they, don't, they care no less. So that there is peace in the family. My ultimate dream is to pass the anti-discrimination bill. The anti-discrimination bill is very simple. It doesn't talk about marriage equality. It only talks about non-discrimination in the workplace, in schools, in public establishments, and in the acquisition of licenses. That's simple. Just like in the West, when they first had an advancement in their equality or in their human rights, they first passed an anti-discrimination. It's the right to study, the right to work, and the right to operate a business. I'm always taking care of myself. I, I want 
to be beautiful inside and it comes outside. I'm very close with my mom. Actually, I'm taking care of her because um, she suffered a uh, stroke. I'm the one who attends during her uh, medication, during her laboratory exams, checkups, and I'm the one who pays for her health card. And my dad is, since uh, I'm a transgender, we're not close. We, we don't talk, so he don't like me as a transgender. When I was in college, um, he always kicked me, he always punched me. I hope uh, to see the light of this bill be passed into law, where the Magna Carta for Women, the PWD rights, the rights of children, the Indigenous People Rights Acts were already enacted to law. Why not enact one singular bill that has languished in Congress for 20 years that is rightfully deserving to a marginalized sector, minority sector like the LGBT? There is no reason to be afraid. All adversities in life you will go through, but it, it shouldn't stop you. We have to understand that whatever happens, the love that they gave me before when I was young, it's still there, and I believe it. After all those drama, I have no resentments or grudge with my family. I love them. I experienced being loved as a child. I know they can do it again. For my trans sisters, you have to fight back. You have to claim that space, claim that space that belongs to you, that human right, that rightfully belongs to you. And then you owe everybody to tell your story. Do not hype it, do not exaggerate it, just tell it as it is. People need to learn our struggles, people need to learn from our experiences as transgender people how to live the day-to-day -day struggle of a trans woman like me, how to, you know, validate my gender every day. It's very difficult, but there are no regrets. So we don't regret this life. It's also God's gift. If they say we are the wrongs of the world, I don't believe it. Um, I think we are also God's children, and that's why our goal is to just live a life that is really for us. Thank you.